Hello viewers, welcome to another episode of Food for the Soul. Uh, this is very important uh, topic and it's a, a very important word uh, because our soul needed food and without us feeding our soul, our soul will be uh, hungry of food and many times, many of our soul become kwashoko because there is no, no food for the soul. So today we want to feed our soul with the food, which is the word of God. And I want you to come closer to this word. Uh, my name is Mfonobong Etim. I the minister of the Gospel Church of Christ, Ogutu. I beg you to come closer. Either you are a Christian or you are not a Christian. I want you to just listen to this word. Maybe you can become a Christian through hearing this word. Or when, if you are a Christian, then you can become a very strong Christian when you are hearing this word. When this word allows the word to come nearer to you. What is that word? It's a very powerful word that says walking. The theme, the topic we have is walking in the spirit of God. Walking in the spirit of God. You know, there are a lot of people who are not walking in the spirit of God. So today we want to talk about it. Walking in the Spirit of God. At the end of this lesson, I want you to look at it. If you are truly walking in the Spirit of God, if you are not a Christian, then you will know. How can somebody walk in the Spirit of God? Then you, when you become a Christian, you can now look at yourself. If you are truly walking in the Spirit of God. And let me draw my message from the book of Galatians chapter 5, verse 25. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. The Bible tells us if we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. The Bible wants us to walk in the spirit. God wants us to walk in the spirit. That is why he gave us this word. That if we who have been baptized, who have been baptized and the spirit of God have been given to us, we ought to live by the spirit. And you who are not a Christian, and then you want to have the spirit of God. You cannot just call the spirit of God to come to you. you there is something you need to do before the spirit of God can do can come to you. When we are uh, when we live according to the direction of God's word, and we are living according to what God said, then the spirit of God will be in us. We will have this spirit. The spirit will dwell in our life, and we'll be walking in that spirit. And by walking in that spirit, in fact, our life can never be the same again. Any person who is walking in the, spirit, in the spirit of God, you will see their life can never be. It will be on top of the world. It will be on top of the sin. It will never commit sin any longer. It will never sin against God because he is walking in the spirit. Let me see in the book of Galatians, chapter 5, verse, 15, verse 16 and 17. This I say uh, then, walking in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the laws of the flesh. For the flesh lusted against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. If we are now walking against the, the spirit of lust because we have the spirit of god in us that is why we are going to walk against that spirit but if you don't have the spirit of god in us you will walk in the laws you see people are doing a lot of things being that the hardship of today has been you know they have removed the spirit of god from every every heart and then they want to live according to what the world is brethren we should not be so that is not what god wants us to do what god wants us to do is that as since we have become the Christian, we must walk in the spirit. That the spirit that he has given to us, we must develop that spirit. That's why we say food for the thought, food for the soul. This food is for the souls who have been baptized. This word is for those people who are ready to become Christian. And how, how would I become a Christian? Then we are going to tell you in, in that. In order to be within the realm of the spirit, one must behave after the spirit inspired word of god you need to you need to live according to the word of god that is what the bible tells us 
let us live according to the word of god let us live what the as the bible is instructed us to live let us live those things that are in the world paul also here yeah, he's telling those Galatian people that they, they they should live they should live in harmony with the direction of the spirit they should live in harmony with the direction of the spirit but many people are not living in harmony with the direction of the spirit they live in the direction of their life and that is why they cannot walk in the spirit the bible said there is a way that seems right unto man but the end of it is destruction many of us are not walking in direction of god many of us do not allow the spirit of god to direct us we want the loss of our life the loss of our of our uh, own uh, life to direct us and when it happens like this then we are not walking in the spirit of god now let us now see how we are going to walk how we are going to do it okay, number one how to be a faithful christian is for us to live to be spiritual at the book of Galatians chapter uh, 5 verse 16 and 17 that said this i say then walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the laws of the flesh for the flesh lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh and these are contrary to one to the other so that ye cannot do the things that ye would that is what how we can be that we have to walk in the spirit we have to think about the things of god we have to move with the children of god we have to read the bible we, we have to sing the the praises we we, we we have to attend the the all the the lessons or the lectures or the midweek services all this would help us to walk in faith and we must have faith in god bible tell us that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of god and you can only have that faith when you are faithful to god if you are faithful to god you have it. now let us see number two because of time it is it is to love god it is to love god and we see it in the book of matthew chapter 16 verse 24 that with all our heart soul and this mind and the strength we should love god with all our mind we should love god with all our soul we should love god with all our strength we should love god in everything in our life how do you love god my dear brothers and sisters do you do are you sure that you love god with your mind you are you sure that you love god with, with your strength are you sure that you you love you truly really love god as what you are doing are you sure that you are loving god that thing that you have done is it what god said is it what your mind said or is it what the spirit of god is directing us we need to walk in the spirit you must walk in the spirit point number three is tell us that it means uh, to seek face the kingdom of god we first seek the kingdom that is when you are walking in the spirit what all what you do is you face seek the kingdom of god matthew chapter 6 verse 33 says seek face the kingdom of god and his righteousness all other things shall be added unto you when you are walking in the spirit all what your mind will be the things of god you will seek the things of god that's what the bible says where your treasure is that is where your mind will be where is your treasure is that is where your mind will be do you seek god first in your life or what are you seeking first because of the economy of this nation because of the hardship many people many souls have driven away from seeking god first we seek material things we seek other things even when somebody is sick you seek a, a, any other thing you don't even seek the face of god in prayer so that is what if you are walking if the spirit of god dwells in you what you should face first is that you should seek the face the kingdom you should seek seek face god himself now let us see point number four to be obedient to christ in all things matthew uh, john chapter 14 verse 15 he's telling all that we should be obedient to christ in all things that when you are filled with the spirit of god if you are filled with the spirit of god you will be you have that 
obedient to God. You, 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 you obey him. Those people who are not filled with the spirit of God, those that are Christian said they are Christian today, and because they are not filled with the spirit of God, they feel they feel with the spirit of material things. That is why you see them worshiping God in a different world. That is why what God tells them to do, they do a different thing. That is why that people will, will, will read the Bible and interpret it a different way because we refuse to obey Him. We refuse to obey God. And if you refuse to obey God, that shows that there is no that spirit is not there in us. Now let us now see. Another one, which is the big one that we are going to divide them into uh, many passages or many many sections or many subsections that said that lie, uh, live by the Spirit and walk by the Spirit. Galatians chapter uh, 5, verse 25. He is telling all that we should live by the Spirit. We should live by the Spirit. And let us dwell also in the Spirit of God. If we live by the Spirit, and let us also dwell in the Spirit of God. Now, this Spirit that we are talking about, now let us now see it. What is the Bible telling us? Walking in the Spirit. Love. Love your fellow man. Treat him as yourself. Matthew chapter 23 verse 37. He said we should love our neighbor. We should love ourselves. We should love one another. You should, if you have the spirit of God, I'm telling you truth that you are going to treat that person, that man, that woman, that child as you are treating yourself. But because when there's no spirit of God in you, you will treat a, a person differently. You will, you, 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 you will, you, you, you will, you even uh, uh, need to steal from him or even play in tricks. And do a lot of things because the Spirit of God is not there to speak to you. But the Bible tells us, let us now feel with the Spirit of love to our fellow man. Another point number two, under that, he is telling us that love one personal relationship. Love involves one personal relationship with God. If you see Noah, Noah was of a, a relationship with God. In the book of Genesis chapter chapter 6 verse 9 that Noah walked with God and because of that he become obedient child to God he become obedient child to God it involved personal relationship how do we have relationship with God what kind of relationship do we have with God many many men of us do not have relationship with God because of the hardship please let us drop those things and have a relationship with God. It pays for us to have a relationship with God. So the Spirit of God will work with us. The Spirit of God will direct our life. The Spirit of God will make us the child, his child. And point number three, he is telling us that if we are working in God, that we are united in Christ and totally submissive. You are, we are going to be submissive to Christ. Let us see the book of Galatians chapter verse 26 and 27 for ye are all children of god by faith in christ jesus for as many of you as have been baptized into christ have put on christ we have put on christ because we baptize in him so for that reason we must submit to christ many people are not submitted to christ we are submitted to the things of the world we are submitted to ourselves there are a lot of things that we need to do to submit to Christ. We need to submit to Christ. We need to submit to his word. We need to submit. Look at how he suffered for us. So we need to submit to him. If there is no spirit of God in us, no spirit that is like guiding us, you see, that is how people will live a life that is not submissive to Christ. Even when they were baptized. Point number four, he is telling us that we must offer to God spiritual sacrifice. Spiritual sacrifice, the first Peter chapter 2, verse 5. Ye also, as lively stones, are built upon a spiritual house and how an unholy priesthood of to offer up spiritual sacrifice acceptable to God by Christ Jesus. We are to live a spiritual life so that we can offer 
a spiritual sacrifice to God. We need to offer a spiritual sacrifice to God. And also, and point number five is telling all that clearly the, it, it, this should be the evidence. This should be walking in the spirit will be a clear evidence that people will see it in our character. In our character, people will see what we are doing. In our character, they will see, they will look at us and they will know that this is what we are being. So God wants us in our character should be it should be that of clear. We should strive to live soberly. We should strive to live righteously. We should strive to live godly. As we know that God, a day is coming when we are going to leave this world. A day is coming when the Lord who owns us will come. So that is why that our conduct, your life, is that by the fruit we shall know them. By the fruit, people will know you. If you are walking in the spirit, by what come out from your mouth, by what life, what kind of life that you are living, by the kind of action that you are taking. When there is problem, how do you do it? Do, if you have the spirit of God that is in you, when there is problem, people will see the spirit of God displaying in your life. But when you have no spirit of God in you, when there is any problem, in fact, you will react like the devil. I'm not calling it the devil, but the action can make you to react like the devil. And the, the last point is telling all that when, when you have the Spirit of God, in fact, when you commit sin, you will weep. You will weep. You will weep over your sin and even to the sin of others. When you see others committed sin, you will cry. You will not happy. You, you will see somebody who has committed sin, you will be not happy. Even when you commit sin, you will not be happy about what you are doing. In the book of Philippians chapter 3, verse 18 and 19 he said for many work of whom i have told you often and now tell you even weeping that they are the enemies of the cross of christ whose end is destruction whose god is their belly and whose glory is in their shame who mind early things these are this is paul he is crying is weeping for the people who did not regard the, the, the suffering of Christ. How do you say it? If you have the Spirit of God, when you have committed sin, you will cry over your sin. If somebody, someone committed sin who is so close to you, you will not be happy about it. Even when this fellowship is given to somebody, you will be not happy. You can never laugh. You will be very, very serious. You will be crying about it because that person has lived the map. That person have left the mark and he had gone away from this from from god and that is why that we should not be happy when we see one that is being disfellowship or being in sin or we also fall in sin we have to cry about it because our life our life is full of the spirit of god unless we are not allowed the life the spirit of god to control us that is when we are are now not being controlled by the Spirit of God. And uh, let us say the conclusion of this. My conclusion is just like a question. That let us now look at it. Let us look at this. If Paul addressed us today, if Paul can come today and uh, address you, would Paul address us as a spiritual disciple or a carnal disciple? Think about it. If Paul is around in our life how is he going to address us is it spiritual disciple or carnal disciple i pray that the lord will help us for us to interpret this word for us to feel about this thing i pray that this word will be in your life i pray that this word will continue to make us grow better than before thank you for listening may the lord will bless you and bless you i will come once again and the next time when we come we are going to share another thing. God bless you. And the Lord be with everyone of us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.